All right, welcome back, everyone, to our second lecture, um, BC 310, Church and Ministry Engagement. Today we've been discussing on volunteer management, how do we engage with volunteers, so on. And um, I'll just cover the theory, and then we can talk some practical things. Um, so, um, yeah. So volunteer, uh, so we've talked about volunteers, getting them on, you know, involved and what will mot motivates them. Uh, volunteer management software this is on page 33. Now, as of now, you know, uh, a lot of our coordination is being done through WhatsApp uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, some, you know, go, um, basically spreadsheets and WhatsApp. Um, that's you know making rosters and all that, but we are right. We are our team, our IT team, is building. Uh, uh, you know, we have, we have, we've designed and we're in the process of building uh, our own community portal. So eventually, what will happen is hopefully by next year, I think uh, everything will be done through our church app, where uh, volunteers will sign up. Uh, they'll all be put into teams. The team leaders can manage the team all within our church app. Uh, and so then that'll, you know, that'll uh, help. We are using a church management software, uh, which you know we'll, I'll talk about it in uh, in, a, in a, the other course on media and technology in ministry, uh, where we manage all our uh, information, church management. So we are also building our own. What we are using right now is um, you know an, a free open source one, which uh, it's okay, it's good, but. You know, we can't tailor it much to what we want to do. So our IT team is also building. We're also building our own. So eventually we'll replace it. Um, but I'll show you what we have in, in the other course when we talk about media and technology. So we're managing all our information, people information in that software. But our volunteer teams right now are still being managed through spreadsheets and uh, WhatsApp groups. But our goal is to move it all into the church app. So everything will be managed within the church app. So you can sign up, uh, see your roster, all that will happen within the church app and so on. All right. Now, one big area of challenge is volunteer and staff relations. I mean, this can be actually a place of great, uh, you know, great uh, blessing or it can be a place of great problem. Problem means, you know, uh, staff can blame volunteers, volunteers can blame staff. They didn't do their job, they didn't do their job. But usually those, those kind of classes could happen. Or they could just work together very nicely. Uh, they could appreciate each other and support each other and work together nicely. And that's the place we want to be. And hopefully that's what's happening. Uh, at ABC, but it is also true that uh, they, from time to time, you know, problems have happened, and we've had to sort out those issues. So, uh, so what we, um, what, uh, what are some of the lessons we've learned is um, the staff must understand the volunteers, understand that they can only give so much time, right? Don't overwork them. You know, always appreciate them. You know, so from our, from the church side, we are doing our best to appreciate. So simple things. Example: we provide breakfast for all the volunteers, especially at Central, because they come by six o'clock in the morning, sometimes earlier, depending on what happened. But at least the setup team. They're all coming early in the morning. So as a way of saying, hey, we appreciate it, we'll provide breakfast. Well, it hardly costs anything, you know, some whatever simple breakfast. So then volunteers feel happy. You know, I'm coming early and the church is doing this for me. They're giving me breakfast because they have come at early at uh, six o'clock. They have to stay till two o'clock until everything's packed. So we provide breakfast. For us, it's a good thing. So it's a little way of saying, hey, we appreciate appreciate you coming. So breakfast, tea, coffee, all those things are provided. 
So they come, they set up, including setup team, worship team, they all come. And worship team has to stay for two services, you know, they so so we give them breakfast. So in between services, they can, or I think in between during the first service after lead worship, they go have breakfast, they come back, then they practice, get ready for second service. So simple things like that, you know. And then uh, we we need to, you know, our staff and volunteers, we treat each other with trust, respect, and celebrate each other. Let me we trust each other. So uh, there should not be any, you know, withholding of information. Be transparent, share information, communicate as one team. Even though some team members are volunteers, some team members are staff. But function as one team. That means share the information, you know, uh, work as one team. Right? So that uh, we have to uh, encourage um, teamwork and harmony. Uh, be transparent and uh, get feedback. Yeah. Volunteers will give feedback, you know, I, this is not working fine, this is not working fine. Address those matters, you know, where there is a thing. But even here, sometimes the problem is with the volunteers. Because sometimes there are some volunteers who want to be in control. They want to, they want to be the leader. And we say, no, no, in this case, our staff is the leader because they, they know this you know, area well. Uh, they're skilled, and there's a lot of preparation work that is happening during the week. So that leadership responsibility remains for the staff. We can't give it to a volunteer, right? But some volunteers, they want to be in charge. So we can't let that happen. So we have to deal with that attitude. And if they're willing to change, they can. If they're not, just let them step aside, you know. Um, in fact, just uh, today is Thursday, right? Yeah, just earlier this week, we had to deal with one person. Uh, uh, so this person was um, just having a bad attitude, you know, uh, talking to other team members uh, about the team leader or the leaders or the pastors or the, who are leading that area ministry, volunteers, you know, just, just, you know, talking bad to other team members. And this was going on for a while. They warned once and twice, and then finally... We, we said, you know, they came, they, they, they already told me, the pastor said, hey, we're going to tell that person to step out, step aside. I said, yeah, I mean, you, you're in charge, you do it. And so they had a call with that person this week. And the uh, person couldn't take it. it was just too much, just came back with lots of very harsh words. And so it became a very ugly situation. But they had to do it because the attitude of the volunteer was affecting the whole team. And this particular volunteer always wanted to be in the front, you know, wanted to have the attention and so on. And they had given some warnings, you know, hey, we are seeing this, please don't do it, please, but no change. So it was a very difficult situation. We had to work through it this week. Uh, so some of those things happen, where, but we have to protect the church. So that's where. Uh, as I mentioned, we had to create a safe environment for other people. Right? Uh, our standards apply to our, you know, rules apply to everyone. So if you want to be a part of the team, everybody must follow those rules because it has to be safe for everyone. You know, and if somebody is causing problems, we either tell them to change or please leave, you know, please step out. And that's what we had to do with this particular person. And uh, it was very difficult. And so in, the, in that team, because that team was being affected of all of this uh, thing. So these kinds of things do happen. And uh, we have to notice it. And we have to address it. We cannot keep quiet. If you keep quiet, it will disrupt the team. It will affect other people. The good people who want to come and serve, they will be affected. Then they will also lose motivation. They will step away. Then work will not get done. Or the burden will come on the staff. You know, so all these things. And um, yeah, so different problems have happened uh, over these so many years. There are times when um, the volunteers could not respect the leaders, the staff who have been appointed, maybe because of age. 
or maybe because you know the the, the volunteers were older than the the leader who's been put there by the church so they feel like hey i know more than this person or i have who are these young people coming to lead you know so that that is where you have to stand behind your leaders yeah we know they are young uh, we know they are leading a team of people who are all older than them volunteers obviously uh, and right now especially when they start there'll be always that initial uh, period where uh, the volunteers are not so welcoming to these new leaders you know because they're younger and uh, the general thing uh, here in church is we like to appoint younger leaders. Why? Because we want to prepare for the future, right? We want to train up the next generation, generation so that they are the ones who are going to continue uh, for the future. So we uh, intentionally appoint younger leaders so they can be nurtured. But then the volunteers who may have been volunteering longer or in age, they are older, they may find it difficult to welcome these younger leaders so that's when you have to kind of support stand behind them help them to go through those first six months sometimes first one year you know then then everybody understands that yeah 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 they're they're, they're young but they're doing a good job uh, they know what they're doing and uh, they're young but they have the zeal the energy and also the skill and so then they begin to accept uh, younger leaders and so on. So these kind of things happen and you know we may have to do a couple of meetings to explain everything, to keep everybody uh, aligned and uh, going together and so on. So so on. Um, uh, when can you notice that there is a breakdown between volunteer staff relationship? How do you notice that? Sometimes uh, if the volunteers and staff are not clear on who's supposed to do what, then you know that hey, communication is not happening. Eh? Volunteers are thinking staff will do it. Staff is thinking volunteers will do it. Then there's a problem in communication, right? That we're not giving clear roles and responsibilities, or they're not cooperative. They're not working with each other on things they have to do together. Then hey, this cannot go on. You have to work as one team, you know. Or they're not welcoming to ideas and suggestions from each other. And you know there are times when uh, we've had some very intense meetings in the church office. There'll be these volunteers sitting and <laughs> our staff sitting and yeah, you know, we talk it out, you know, okay, what, you know, and we've had to do that. Um, when, uh, when, when these, uh, when, when there is this kind of a breakdown or between volunteer and staff in certain ministry team, certain areas, or if, uh, you know, they're having separate meetings, leaving each other out, they're not sharing information, they're not communicating directly, or they're using us and them language, or uh, each one wants to, you know, cover their own, protect their own territory. So these are things I watch and, uh, you know, and I am very strict. I would, I'm not, if I see something, I just address it, you know. Um, my thought is, it is better to, it's like, you know, a cancer. It's better to cut it off the moment you see it rather than let it grow and grow and grow and then you have some big thing you don't know what to do, a big problem, you know. So the moment you notice uh, something wrong, deal with it, address it. And it may not be always easy, uh, but you have to address it and then, you know, bring the teams back together. So uh, the reality is there will always be these challenges. Uh, volunteers and staff and working together or between volunteers and all of that and we have to sit down talk uh, sort things out understand deal with attitudes and uh, expectations and so on yeah. so um, you know, some of the things we, some of the questions you can ask is, you know, just to keep check on volunteer teams is, uh, are the leaders fulfilling their role? So that's very important. If there is a volunteer team leader, but if the volunteer team leader is not able to do their work, maybe they're too busy with the other things, then it'll affect the whole team. 
the team won't be able to perform. So start with the leader. Are they able to do it? Uh, are they following our guidelines? So we have guidelines in life example, respect to a church community, and respect of team leaders. Um, are they following those guidelines? Are they are the volunteers committed? Are they serving passionately? Are they doing it just because you're rostered? Or do they feel burnt out, like I just shared earlier? Um, are there tensions? Uh, are they feeling part of the community? You know. So these volunteer teams are actually a great opportunity for building community. Because when people are working together, they feel part of the church, they feel connected to each other. And 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 some some I've seen, you know, some of these volunteer teams are so, so good. They're so closely knit, you know. Uh, they'll they work hard and they'll go for lunch together, you know, they will spend time together, they will pray together. Uh, they will uh, have uh, you know ex you know just to build really meaningful relationships and some of the relationships that I've seen uh, have been you know oh, in the volunteer teams have been so great people just get connected with each other so these volunteer teams are a great place to build community to build relationships and so on um, so there's some really good things that happen okay. uh, last few thoughts here on page thirty four. Uh, we also need to give uh, feedback about the volunteers. So, uh, you know, we look at what they're doing, even if they are volunteers, you know, we, we hold them to a high standard. So, example, media team, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of people sitting at the back and doing the presentations, they're all vol volunteers, but they know that if something doesn't go, they'll, uh, I'll send a word immediately, hey, slides are not changing quickly or you know something so they know that they can't just you know be relaxed about the work the work has to be done properly even if they are volunteers you know so otherwise don't serve you know we'll find somebody else because we expect work to be done well you know whatever whether it's done by volunteers so that feedback is constantly given uh, the standards always raised up kept at a high level um and then we need to appreciate and recognize them. So from for many years, I, I don't know when we started this, but uh, every church anniversary, which is around the 18th of Feb, we, that Sunday is a volunteer appreciation day. So every year, uh, it's a way for us to say thank you to the volunteers. We're not paying them. Uh, you know, they're all serving voluntarily. So we give a little gift once a year. And a lunch, you know. So, so okay, just a way to say thank you to them and their families. And um, once a year, we do that. Now, uh, some volunteer teams may do some other lunches during the year if they want to do a team lunch and all that. We we also help with that. But once a year, all volunteers, you know, uh, we want to appreciate them. So we'll give a gift sometimes a bag or a cap or a jacket or something, and just say thank you. Yeah, it's a way of saying we appreciate you and thank you for... Thank you. Now, uh, you know, so, uh, re volunteers can also work remotely from anywhere in the world. Um, this was very useful during COVID time uh, when we needed to make phone calls for different uh, things, you know, uh, volunteers work remotely, uh, so that's possible. Uh, all this can even work from other parts of the world, but we right now we don't have, uh, I think maybe on uh, Sunday morning uh, live chat, the, the chat moderators, some of them are from other locations, and I think uh, from even other countries, they, they're moderating the chat. So there, you know, they could work, that's fine. They, it doesn't matter which part of the world they are, they can, still moderated as long as they follow our guidelines uh, so you know you could nowadays because of technology you can have volunteers from uh, other places yeah so that's about uh, you know volunteers uh, very important is we we look for you know good people with good attitude they should have the heart of a servant um, willing to serve uh, not looking for recognition not looking for name or fame but just have a good heart and 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 uh, you know, I I would say that uh, for, you know for the most part, 
you know, the last 20, 23, 24 years, uh, we've had very good volunteers. You know, I would say like 95 plus percent of people are very good, good heart. They really want to serve. Uh, few have some, you know, some issues and we've had to deal with it. But majority are very good people. They really serve and and uh, it's 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 great joy and honor to have them serve in church and so on. All right. So let's uh, open up some time for questions. Uh, any questions on volunteers and so on? Francis, any questions? Chuck, Michael, Nina. Any questions from our online students on volunteers, volunteer management? So, uh, uh, yes. Pastor, so volunteers is like an open, like like anybody can come and anybody can serve, right? So, can we put a limit, like only this many volunteers we are needed, like? Or else can say like when people approach, we already have enough volunteers. Maybe we'll reach out to you. Is that a good thing? Mm. So maybe yeah. So it depends on the area. Depends on the team. So one is, of course, we want them to be first of all committed to the local church. Like it is not like anybody can come. They attend one service, and uh, we ask them, okay, are you really going to be part of APC? You want to make this your local church, your home church, then you can volunteer. So that's one first thing, yeah, that you want to be a part of this local church, then you volunteer. And in some areas where, uh, you know, I, as of now, I can't think of any area where we would say we have too many volunteers. I can't think of any. Um, yeah. I guess, you know, if there is a team that you need 10 people and you already have 10 people, then definitely you can say, hey, uh, we have enough people. Uh, you could, could you look at other teams? You know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But generally, uh, I think, uh, you know, generally, almost all teams, we you know, if they want to serve, uh, we let them join because if you have more people, then you can distribute the load, you know, across more people. Yeah. Yes, we need a lot of volunteers in the early stages. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Pastor, like you mentioned, like for that, uh, some leaders, they are young, right? And some volunteers are elder than them. Yeah. So yeah. in some churches, like in some places, really we can see sometimes like the leader who is the leader, he's younger, but he's like uh, using the leadership in the wrong way. Okay. Uh, like uh, sometimes not even he's younger, so he should uh, respect the people who is elder than him yes. in certain area, no matter even though he is a leader. Yes. So sometimes we see the person is younger, but he's uh, talking like very rudely, mm. very badly mm. because of the leadership he got. Mm. So how to deal with this kind of people? How to like tell them, yes, you are leader, but you should be humble. Mm. So how to deal with this kind of people when we see in, about volunteers and all? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think part of it will be the training. Like, uh, so we tell people like, you know, how you work with others. So part of the training, how do you work with people, uh, especially people who are older to you? Right? How do you work with them? How do you lead them? Yeah, you are the leader, but how do you do it? So I'm not saying that you know everybody will be perfect because you know we all make mistakes. Um, but in general, we 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 give them the guidance. And if they make mistakes, we have to give them feedback. I right? said, so, hey, that was not the way to talk to the team. Now, uh, or you know, you did not do that properly or this was the mistake. So we have to give them feedback. And that's something we always do. You know, like we are watching. Uh, 
if something goes wrong, uh, we tell them, look, yeah, yeah, you made a mistake. This is a better way to do it. And then, so the leaders also are learning. Uh, or if they're being very rough with the people, it's okay. Hey, don't be, don't be so harsh. So don't be so rude. Things like that. So we have to deal with that and find out. You know, uh, we, we can't say the leader is always wrong, but you know, we had to find out actually what was going on, what was the situation under which these things happened, and then give the correction accordingly. But then we have to train people. We have to give feedback. And uh, if the problem continues, like if it goes on happening, then we have to take them out. Like example, so like what you said, suppose we have appointed leaders, but they are continuing to mistreat the people, the older people, or whoever's on the team. You know, we can give once, twice, we give them feedback, correction. But if they don't change and they continue to mistreat, then we say, please step down. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, you ask your question, then we'll come to. Yeah, yeah. like uh, one more is like uh, uh, while choosing volunteers, mm -hmm. some people they're, they're very uh, like uh, committed, we can say, mm -hmm. or like they're very eager to do God's work mm -hmm. or like do volunteer in church. But at the same time, like maybe they are very good to do voluntary in church. They're on time. Yes. They are doing their best. But uh, in out when we can we can see their lives, it's not aligned. Okay. So you, their their life testimony is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They are like they are willing. They are very like committed also. But what if they are not aligned with God? Like testimony is not good. So how can we like we we'll accept them as a volunteer because they're they are very committed. In, as a volunteer, so what to do in these kind of situations? Yeah, so uh, that, that's a good point, and that has been uh, a serious issue. So we have our volunteer team guidelines. So we tell people, you read it. And there are three things over there. One is life testimony. That's the first thing. Because even though you're a volunteer, when you're serving in church, people see that you're representing the church. Especially if you're in a visible place, like if you're on the platform, like leading worship, or they see you as an usher, so on. If you're in a visible thing, then your life testimony is important. So that's one of our, that's first requirement. Second is uh, respect for church leadership. That means you must respect whoever is the leader. You have to respect. And like, you know, many times the leader could be younger than you, right? Uh, depending on which area of ministry. So you have to respect that. Even if the person is younger than you, you have to respect that person. And third is respect for the church community. That means don't uh, even do anything to disturb the community. So these are three requirements we have stated in a guideline. So we tell the people, you please read it. So then after that, they've signed up as a volunteer. And then let's say, we find out that, let's say, example, I'm saying, suppose they're serving in church and they go out there smoking and drinking. News comes. We will tell them to step down. So you cannot serve as a volunteer because uh, we told you before you joined that uh, your life testimony is important. And if anything happens, we will tell you to step down. We already told you. So if some issue like that, we will tell them to step down. If it's a problem, example, uh, you know, uh, if they're going through a personal struggle or something, of course, we will tell them to take a break, uh, resolve the problem, and come back. Right? But if it is something they are unwilling to change, so even in the case of like smoking or drinking, we'll talk to them, say, okay, you sort that out, you can come back and serve after we sort it. It's not like we are sending them away from church, but as long as you want to serve as a volunteer, this is our standard. Yeah, please. So two questions. Mm. One is like uh, like an add-on question to what Chirash did the first, like 
especially for like now people when we uh, have that vision of training new people and giving them the opportunities yes they may be elder people below them yes and uh, when they were doing that their role of mm. their responsibility giving instructions or leading the team uh, people who are elder than us or may not be submissive to the instructions that were given yeah and how to deal with them uh, how to deal in those situation like when the instructions were given to the people for twice and thrice but still if they are not listening to the instructions and doing it how as a young people can deal with elders cuz uh, we can also go around like you no know, show like i am the leader you have to listen to us so how to exercise our authority that was given leadership authority in a good way that they won't be feel condemned they won't get hurt but still we'll make them to obey understand and uh, yeah. do the work so if yeah like if the problem like what you described happens and uh, the the leader the team leader who's younger uh is not being respected and their you know their plans or directions are not being honored by a team member who's older and if that continues then they will come and tell me so then i will talk to that person I'll say hey see you're most welcome to serve but when you are serving in that team this is how we're going to work and if you cannot then you will have to step aside yeah so they'll will come to me and then i will address it and uh, so that we always stand behind our leaders you know i mean i say always as long as they're doing the right thing right we always stand behind them uh, and will will 100% support them yeah and also uh, the other one is like regarding similar to it like when we know they are not having that personal testimony like mm. outside the organization that mm. we are running mm. so like we ask them to step out mm. and also uh, can we also provide an opportunity for them to come back and work yeah with? yeah so we have to address the issue and like whatever that issue is and we say okay you step away from the team until that is addressed and once we know that is addressed then we can let you back to be part of the team so yes they are welcome back uh, as you know, once that issue is addressed now sometimes some of the complaints against volunteers can be very subjective that means oh that person is wearing this kind of clothes they should not be wearing this kind of clothes so for me it's like hey that's such a difficult issue because uh, you know we are not here to police people in the kind of clothes they wear right? yes we want people to be dressed decently modestly that we already communicate in our guidelines when you are serving as a volunteer uh worship team has their own guidelines so when you're up on stage you dress modestly all of that but even you know even after that if if people in the congregation there are certain people you know who will complain why they are wearing this kind of dress and all that sometimes they be, you know all those things so that i just leave it you know because it is a subjective thing right you know what you think is right and what the other person thinks is right you know those we want to want to argue with that i don't so i don't take up those kinds of complaints i just leave it because you know everybody has a different taste or whatever you know and we can't be satisfying everybody but if there is a serious problem then we will address it genuinely something wrong we will definitely address it but if it's something like this uh you know i know all kinds of silly complaints about how water is served or how <laughs> uh, coffee tea is being served so, you know all kinds of silly complaints come i'll just ignore it if you get it it's not worth addressing it you know um but if it's a real genuine thing then yeah we will take it up yeah okay any other questions from online okay there's a question here 
Um, there are volunteers who have been serving quite a few years, and there are others who are relatively new. Two years. The acceptance is relatively very low, and the trust has to be developed on both sides. So what is your suggestion to both the experienced and the new people on the team? Yeah. So trust has to be earned, right? Now, by default, we usually extend a certain amount of trust to each other, to new people. But that trust, real trust, has to be earned. So new people who come into the team definitely have to prove themselves. Right? Because the others who have been there are watching. Hey, we've been here serving five years, 10 years. A new person has joined. So obviously, uh, we'll have to, everybody has to operate at that same standard. Right? And um, the new people will have to definitely prove themselves and earn the trust and the respect of other people. Yeah. And so that's where I think the orientation of the new volunteers uh, helps. That's saying, look, this is standard. You follow it. If you follow it, then obviously people respect and trust uh, the new volunteers. All right, so let's stop here. Uh, if there are no more questions. Uh, we will uh, continue this next week. Uh, we'll move forward into the other topics. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll connect again next week. Bye now. God bless.